In this video, we'll walk through the process of identifying and improving slow SQL queries. It's important to note that a slow query is not necessarily a problem, and speed is relative. For example, a query that is run once a day, takes two seconds to run, and generates a large summary report would likely be considered fast enough. However, if a two-second query is meant to run 100 times a minute in a crucial part of the main user interface, it's worth taking a closer look to see if you can boost its efficiency. In our system, we have a set of stock trading data with 1 million rows, where each row represents a single transaction. Our system is primarily used to run SQL queries on this stock data and keep dashboards up to date. Recently, users have reported that dashboards have been slow to update. To find the query that's causing this issue, we will look at all the SQL statements run in the user namespace. From the SQL Explorer, click the SQL Statements tab to see all SQL statements in the current namespace. Since we want to know which queries are running slowly on our stock data, we can add a filter to show only queries running on that table. This lets us see details such as execution time, average time, and total time for all the queries on this table. Sorting by total time, we can see which queries are taking up the most time. Here, we can see that a query running about 60 times a day has a total time of 106.5 seconds, meaning the system has spent a total of 106.5 seconds running this query. This is where the relativity of speed comes into play. You can compare the number of times a query is run daily to the amount of time spent on it to determine whether the speed is sufficient. In this case, the total time is high, considering how frequently this query is run. Let's click the table name, data.stockdata, to take a closer look at this query. This query keeps an up-to-date tally of the number of sell transactions performed for each of the stocks, and this tally is refreshed in the main trader's dashboard every 5 seconds. When we run this query on a test system with representative data, it takes nearly 2 seconds to execute. This matches the slowness that users have reported. Now that we have identified the query causing this issue, let's figure out what's causing it to run slowly. When trying to fix a slow query, the first step should always be to review the query plan. The InterSystem SQL Query Optimizer automatically processes queries to run as efficiently as possible with the information currently available. As part of this process, the Query Optimizer generates multiple plans for processing the filters, aggregations, and other operations of the query. It estimates their cost based on table statistics and chooses the most efficient plan at runtime. Looking at the query plan allows you to see how it scans through table and index structures. This may help you identify which steps are taking the most time and slowing down the query. Based on this information, you can make adjustments to improve efficiency, such as adding indexes or parallel processing. To view the query plan from the SQL Explorer, enter your query and click Show Plan. As you can see, the first step of executing our query is to read the master map, looping on ID. The master map is the main data structure for a standard table. It stores the individual rows one by one. Since we are looping through this structure by ID, the first step in executing our query is to read the data from every row of our table. If your query plan includes a master map scan, like this for a table with a large number of rows, it is likely inefficient. Our table has over a million rows of data, so reading the master map is very inefficient. We'll need to make adjustments to our query to improve this plan. Before making any changes, let's ensure the Query Optimizer is using up-to-date table statistics. Statistics like row count will help determine which plan is most efficient. To check this, select the table, then, from the Actions menu, click Tune Table Information. The current extent size, or row count, is set to the default 100,000. This indicates we have not yet collected statistics on this table, so the Query Optimizer assumes this is a rather small table and that a full table scan would not be too costly. To gather statistics on the table, click Tune Table. In recent product versions, table statistics are collected automatically at least once for most regular table structures. However, it's always worth checking if the statistics look accurate, and the extent size is an easy statistic to double check if you know the size of your table. Now that we can be sure the Query Optimizer has up-to-date table statistics, let's revisit the query plan. The plan now consists of multiple modules, each of which performs a distinct set of actions. Modules invoke one another, and some may be invoked multiple times. The main difference in our query plan can be seen in module F. This module partitions the master map, then calls module A in parallel over each partition. 
This specific query plan uses adaptive parallel execution, a newer method of parallelization. In older product versions, parallelized query plans look slightly different. The work is extracted into a separate subquery that runs in parallel, so you would need to have two separate query plans in that case. Executing the query again, we can see that parallelization has decreased the query time. However, the query plan still includes reading the master map, looping on ID, so there is still room for improvement. Ideally, an index can be used here instead to reduce the amount of data that must be read. In some cases, indices may not be used when you expect them. If this is the case, verify your indices exist and are selectable. They may be disabled during building, or after a failed index build, or the build index command may not have been run in the first place. To see if you have any indices on your table, select the table in the SQL Explorer. Then click the Catalog Details tab and select Maps slash Indices. We do not yet have any indices set up, so our next step will be to add an index. It's important to note that trying out different indices and changes can have an impact on performance of insert, update, and delete operations on your table. Indices cost storage, so take care to add them thoughtfully. If possible, make changes on a test system with representative data to see what works best before implementing changes on your live system. Here, we will add an index on our test system. Our query includes two WHERE conditions on the transaction type and date. We expect that roughly half the rows in our table have the transaction type cell, but the number of rows with the date we're searching for should be much lower. For that reason, we'll try adding an index on the transaction date so that the query can read fewer rows. To create this index, run the create index command. This command automatically builds the index as well. Let's look again at the query plan. The first module, f, divides the master map into subranges so that the query can be performed in parallel. Module F calls Module A, which creates a temp file to hold the results of Module B. These results will be used to calculate the count. Module B reads the index we just created to find the IDs of the rows with a matching transaction date, then reads only those rows from the master map. Running our query again, we can see that we have reduced the execution time to under one second. Running tune table and adding an index made a big impact on the efficiency of this query, but there are other options to consider. One option is to compare the performance of various plans in the SQL Optimizer. To view these, select Alternate Show Plans from the Tools menu in the SQL Explorer. Here you can enter the query you are trying to optimize and view the possible query plans. Testing the performance of these plans is especially useful if certain indices were not included in the selected query plan as expected. You can select and try a query plan that does not use the index to see how it performs. Another option to consider is parallelism. In our case, the query was already parallelized automatically after we ran the tune table utility. InterSystems Iris does this by default for queries accessing a significant amount of data. Parallelized execution improves query performance by spreading work across multiple processes, decreasing the overall execution time. On some systems, this auto-parallel setting might be disabled, or the threshold at which it occurs might be set too high. In this case, you can use the percent %parallel hint to suggest that the optimizer parallelize. Once you have decided what changes to make, you can promote them on your live system using appropriate procedures to ensure minimal outages.